You guys, I highly recommend working somewhere that has nitro cold brew on tap. It's dangerous. But uh, I felt like I needed a little bit of uh, extra juice for this week because, um, man, when I was prepping for this episode this week, I just went down so many different rabbit holes and it was, you know, it was really fun, but it took me, you know, it was challenging to kind of rein it in and, and keep this to something that will be hopefully somewhat coherent, but, um, I got a really good one for you. And basically I, what I wanted to talk about was time and time is a funny thing. If you think about it, we all know that it exists. We all agree that one hour is one hour, one minute is one minute, a week is a week, right? But we experience time very differently. We experience it depending on what we're doing with our time. And there's a lot of other things that influence it. And it's very, you know, I kind of wanted to start this and be like, time is a flat circle, you know? If you watch True Detective, it's like the best line. I think it's a reference to Nietzsche, and I'm not going to go down that rabbit hole, which I ended up doing. Um, but so time is, is this is this thing that can feel sped up sometimes, and it can feel like it slows way down. It can feel like it doesn't even exist, and it's not something that you can really see or touch or hear. Um, so, so how we experience it is not necessarily through the five senses. It's through some other relational type process that's going on in our mind. And what's funny, I was looking this up, is that you actually experience time with different parts of your brain depending on what it is that you're doing. So it's not even one specific part of your brain that's always experiencing uh, or processing the passage of time. Why are we talking about this? Well, I started on this because the two biggest excuses that we hear when it comes to why we cannot commit to a program or a lifestyle of health and fitness is time and money. And if you're a member of street parking or if you have an internet connection, you know that the money thing is pretty much BS because you don't need really any equipment or any space. You just need a body to be able to work out and get fit. Right. So you don't really need any money or very much money to be able to achieve a high level of fitness. So that one's out the door. So then the other one is time. And that's honestly the most common one. That's the biggest one. I don't have time. What do you mean when you say that you don't have time? What are you really saying? So I'm sure, you know, this, you always have the, the person that breaks down the whole week and it's been done before, but I'm going to do it here for you. 168 hours in a week. So if you have the luxury, and I hope that you do, uh, I'm working towards it, of getting eight hours of sleep a night. Hopefully it's at least seven. But so 56 hours of that 168, you're sleeping, right? If you had a full-time job, another 40 hours, you are working. And then you might be commuting a couple hours. You know, it's another 10 hours of drive time. And then you've got meals and going to the bathroom and just all of the, you know, kind of necessary functioning uh, things that you need to do to keep your body functioning. So generously, if that's another five hours a day, I did the math on this. Basically, there's at least 35 hours in the week that I don't know if any of us really know where they go. It's just like this, this empty space that somehow gets filled up with stuff. Now, if you have 45 minutes to commit to working out, 45 minutes, five days a week, that's less than four hours. 
less than four hours in an entire week of 168 hours, even if it's filled up with a full-time job, even if you're working 50, 60 hours a week, even if you're commuting less than four hours is all you need to get in really, really, really good shape, to get a really high level of fitness. So the time thing, the time excuse is also not an excuse. Everybody, if you're watching this, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna say something very bold here. I'm gonna say, you have time. You have the time. Now me saying that doesn't even really, for some of you, maybe your mind's blown and you're like, wow, I really do have the time. This is awesome. I'm gonna go work out. Stop watching right now, go work out. Um, and that's great. But I think for a lot of people, especially if you um, really feel like you don't have the time, me sitting here saying that you do have the time isn't really gonna change anything. So we gotta look at like, okay, well, what, what am I saying when I say that I don't have time? And what am I really doing with my time? You've heard the expression, time is money. I think that expression is BS because time is infinitely more valuable than money. You cannot get time back. You can make money. You have a limited amount of time on this earth and you can go out there and make as much money as you want. Yes, it's an exchange, but time is way, way more valuable. So why do we not manage our time and measure our time and keep track of what it is that we're doing with our time and how we spend our time as much as we track how we spend our money or how much money we make, right? Time is way more valuable. And it's interesting that when, if you look at little kids, right? When you remember when you were a kid, like days just lasted forever. And especially in the summertime, you know, when there was more daylight, it was like these days just lasted forever. Um, but then all of a sudden summer was over and you're in school and like the next summer vacation just felt, felt like it was never gonna come. Like nine months away, like how do I even comprehend how much time that is? That's so much. And then now as an adult, it's like a week goes by and you don't even know what happened. And why is that? And there's a lot of reasons I think, but you know, what I've read anyways in, in some of the psychology articles and stuff is uh, essentially when you're a kid, there's so much newness in the world. There's so many new experiences happening your sensory functions are, are taking in all this new information and trying to process it and make sense of it. So because there's parts of your brain that are having to be so much more active, you're so much more present in what's going on because there's so much unfamiliarity, you create bigger, more powerful, more meaningful experiences, and you actually have more memories and as we get older, the brain starts to get compartmentalized. Things become more familiar. We fall into these routines, whether or not they're good routines or bad routines, it's very easy to just get into a routine. And because it becomes so familiar, your brain isn't gonna invest the same type of like uh, brain power because it doesn't need to, because it knows what it's doing, right? So, that's why you hear, you know, like, like a decade goes by and you don't even know what happened. Or some people wake up, there's the, the guy that wakes up when he's 50 and realizes his life is passing him by and then he goes and buys the red Corvette. Now listen, if you want to go buy a red Corvette, if that makes you happy, by all means, go for it. That sounds awesome. This is not one of, you know, about that. But the reason why time seems to speed up as we get older is because maybe we're having less powerful memories. Maybe we're having less important, powerful, meaningful experiences. So we still have the same amount of time. I have the same amount of time in a day as you have, as everybody else has. Think about the, the most notable people that you can think of. 
they have the same amount of time as you do. What those people achieve, they have achieved it in the same amount of time that we all get. So kind of the first thing I just wanted to start talking about is thinking about how we spend our time, starting to pay attention to how we spend our time. And then the other thing is starting to pay attention to how we perceive time. And there's kind of two things that we can do here. Number one, you can take what is familiar and you can somehow make it unfamiliar. Somehow get your brain involved in a way that it becomes new and has to take in more new sensory information so that routine task all of a sudden becomes a little bit more meaningful. You get more involved in what you're doing and time either can slow down and at some point if you go deep enough into this, time actually goes away. And I think that's the coolest thing. And this was a whole other rabbit hole that I went down. But we experience time in a very linear way. It's like this happened before this happened, and then this happened after that happened. So it's just on this one continuum. One of the best descriptions of time that I ever read is, I think it was in Slaughterhouse-Five, Kurt Vonnegut, one of the best authors in the world. You, this is an easy, fast read, but there's a scene in there where this alien is explaining to a human how we as humans see time compared to how time actually exists. You should go read that, it's awesome. But in a nutshell, we see it as this linear thing. It's tunnel vision, right? We can only see, you know, one direction forward or back. But there's all this other stuff maybe that's going on all in all different other directions. And the easiest way for me to kind of wrap my head around that is that when you get so deep into an activity, when you get so fully committed into what you're doing, that it's not like time speeds up or slows down. Time just doesn't exist anymore. And you are just in it. And all you're doing is paying attention to the thing that you're paying attention to. So I could ramble on and on and on and on about this for a long time and confuse myself and confuse all of you. So I'm gonna not do that. But um, instead I'm gonna give you something to think about, something to, to try this week. And basically, when we look back on our life, our life seems to be fuller and bigger and like maybe we've lived longer or done more with our time based on the memories that we have, which is why your youth, you have so many more memories, which is why it seemed like that, like from ages five to 15 probably lasted a lot longer than ages 25 to 35. You can remember a lot more stuff from the first 10 years than the last. Um, so the goal for this week is to add more memory is to add more meaningful experiences. And I don't mean just go skydiving. If you wanna go do that, that's awesome. I've actually never done it, I would love to. So, um, you know, if you have the means, go jump out of a plane. But you don't need to do that. You can fold laundry and you can make it a memorable experience. You can make it powerful. And the way that you do that is Pay attention, right? Pay attention. Pay attention to every little detail. Pay attention to what you're doing, how it feels, how it smells, how it looks. Don't eat your laundry. Don't worry about how it tastes. But, you know, try to fully engage in some activity that is familiar to you and make it unfamiliar, learn something new about that. I use folding laundry as an example, but you know, one of the things that I think is, is, is cool is, is, is conversations. I've, I have a lot of conversations with a lot of people throughout the day, and I've done that for a long time, 
and I don't remember most of them, but I can tell you there are very, very clear memories I have of a conversation that I was having the moment that I realized I was in love with somebody. You know, I, I know the conversations that I've had with my wife. Um, and when I say this, I don't know, and I hope she doesn't get mad. Um, there's some that I don't even remember what we were talking about. I just remember the moment. I remember how I was feeling and how engaged with her I was. The connection that existed between the two of us. Where the words that were being said didn't matter because those are just words. And those words were kind of strengthening and exchanging this connection. But it was so deep. I was so fully engaged in that. That it became about the connection, about the feeling, about I am here with her. We are sharing this instant, this moment. And all of a sudden, time was gone. And language was gone. It was just the two of us there. So a, a conversation with a loved one could be a huge, huge, huge opportunity to create some powerful, meaningful experience. And all it takes is paying attention to that person, paying attention to what they're saying and paying attention to, to not just the words, but like, what is it that they are trying to tell you? What is it that they are trying to convey to you? What is the feeling? Can you feel that feeling rather than just wait for what you're going to say to make yourself sound cool, right? So a conversation, you know, I love to do some more like mindful type of um, workout type exercise stuff. So if you want to bring it into the realm of fitness, do five one minute push ups. Do a one minute push up where it takes you 30 seconds to lower and 30 seconds to push back up. And I guarantee you, you will pay attention to every little muscle fiber, every little thing that is happening. And if you do that in the first minute and then you do it four more times, you will remember those push ups. And what's cool is you will remember those push ups the next time you do push ups regular way. Because you'll learn something and you'll take it with you. And then the next time you do push ups and the next time you do push ups and the next time you do push ups, you're going to remember those one minute push ups. You can do it with squats too. Uh, do those unweighted. So there's a lot of different applications for this. But the goal for this week, think, put some energy into how you choose to spend your time. In the literal sense of the word, as time being the most valuable, precious resource that we have. How are you giving that away? What are you choosing to spend it on? And the way that we can make time slow down and feel like we hit more of it is by putting more of ourselves into the actions that we take. And they don't have to be big, extreme, crazy actions. They can be, that's awesome, but they can be very small, minute, trivial type things where if we engage with them, they become something bigger. So you can go with those examples of the laundry or the conversations or the fitness, come up with your own thing, but try it out and let me know how it goes. Have fun with this. Have a really great week. Um, and thank you so much for, for tuning in and for paying attention. I love you guys and I will see you in a week.